Okay, well, thank you so much for being here, being present in the One Consciousness class, as uh, this time as part of the, the webinar here now. Um, I'm going to start off with an, like a an prayer, uh, with an alignment, so to speak, an alignment prayer that is just given us by uh, Joel. Um, I will introduce a little bit more about what we're going to do today in a moment, but this is where I want to start. It is such a beautiful um, thing to come in with together. So here we are. All that the Father has is mine. Right now, the place where I stand is holy ground. Nothing needs be added to me. I am this instant in one of those many mansions of the Father. Even if appearances do not testify to this, I and my Father are one. In my true being, in my true identity, I and my Father are one. Okay, so this is our start off. Um, as you could already feel like as coming to this class in this moment is that there is a communication going. There's already communication happening. That is not depending on this class or anything like that. No, there's a, um, you are invited uh, in this class to, um, uh, to become even more aware of it, but at the same time it is available to you everywhere you go. You can always um, ask for it, relax into it, invite it in, so to speak, and, um, and, there, you, and there you go. So it's like we come together in this class and you feel that there's already presence and energy flowing. We, we discover that we're actually communicating all the time. And um, we shared this uh, in our class yesterday too. It's like, this is the healing circle that we're part of. This is the healing circle that is just there. It's like a, an incredible energy field um, of consciousness in which we, um, yeah, we tap into it, but it's not really even tapping into it. It is like, it is present. So this is where we find ourselves right now in this place. So we're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything. We're not trying to um, correct anything. And uh, that's the, the beauty of coming together in this moment. You know, in this moment, it is like, yeah, everything is given. So you might as well just relax and sit back and um, like, okay, it brought me to this place. It brought me here. And uh, it is pretty amazing that we can meet like this, um, in this way, in this moment. It's like, this is what happens. This is what is happening in the, the present moment. So Joe, uh, uses this a lot in his talks too, and uh, we're going to read something from the from the chapter from um, the heart of mist of the mystical eye, and um, it is all about spiritual healing, and um, so that is what is occurring right here, right now. And spiritual healing is then we're almost like demystifying it today. It becomes such uh, such an natural way of connecting with one another such a natural way of uh, consciousness like this is this is happening in you all the time wherever you go just by realizing that it takes place you're actually a witness of it yeah that's better let's let's relax let's breathe a little bit So breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. And it makes it so easy to relax, you know? So your mind is still doing what it needs to do. It, it cannot stop itself, you know? It will, yeah, it will pass thoughts through, but we're not going to engage in that today. We don't need that in this, in this half hour that we meet together. 
So here is a whole different way of communicating. This is a whole different way of coming um, in communication with one another. See, the words don't even matter. So it's not like, okay, now intellectually you have to stretch yourself to get this. No, that is not what is taking place right now. Absolutely not. So where are we going to look at today in this one consciousness class? I'll, I will read you a couple of questions that I will answer. I will um, show you the text that we're um, going to use and that you could use as preparation for this class. So today it is a bit of a different day, uh, a different class too. Like the next hour we will um, have another opportunity to meet and in which there's an introduction to the practitioner training as a as a continuation of this class basically and then after that there will be a question and answer so if you have any questions coming up today you can ask them later on in the second class so anyway i'm going to start off with um with the chapter of today and using that um using ingredients so to speak of that um, of that chapter in the class today So a couple of questions I will uh, answer today uh, to, to make it real methodical also this time. So what is spiritual healing? How to deal with persons or conditions? How do you heal? And what is the practice of, spiritual, of the spiritual healer? What is the practice of spiritual healing? So all this will come to us today and um, probably more than that uh, because basically it's always coming back to the same idea and um, that idea we will present also in this class. So to get things uh, right, this is from The Heart of Mysticism, Chapter 3, The Heart of Mysticism, Volume 5. So these are all letters of Joel and this one is from March the practice of uh, spiritual healing. All right, so yeah, now we go to the idea of spiritual healing. What is spiritual healing? So Joel says this, and I will use that as a, as a guideline. First, he starts off with a lot of things that it isn't. Like it has not to do with bodies, it has not to do with unemployment, not with poor people, not with homeless people, not with friendless people. No, he says here, spiritual healing has to do with prayer, with the recognition and acknowledgement of our infinite and perfect nature. Prayer is our ability to attain conscious oneness with God to be receptive and responsive to that which is called the still small voice or spiritual impulse within us, the Christ. So here is an answer to our first question, but see, we, we're not, that's not enough. <laughs> that's not enough for us to, to um, come into it, so to speak, to come in the direct experience of it. So, Prayer is the medium, literally, of um, miraculous healing, of spiritual healing. Prayer is the medium. And what is prayer? That could be one of the questions too today. Like, what is prayer? To keep conscious contact with God. And how am I supposed to do that? And like in this daily life of mine, I'm very busy, I'm doing this and that. And so, no, you don't have to lose that at all. So in our practice of starting our day right, so to speak, by starting our day with resting, with taking a moment, taking some quiet time to, to allow the, uh, yeah, say the uh, remembrance of this communication to come to us. So by coming, becoming completely still and getting in touch with our stillness and, and silence, um, you basically start your day right, so to speak. It's something to, to come back to during the day. Like if you start your day like that, everything becomes seems to become a lot easier. 
uh, for you to handle because you already have this reference in yourself as a memory. Uh, you have your reference of um, one consciousness, of he uh, wholeness. So that's why starting your day with the right practices is, is important. And um, it makes it just a lot easier. It is not that that you, um, yeah, you do it uh, to achieve a certain goal. No, it's more like you, you take that time for yourself to relax deeply to what is really valuable to you and what basically determines who you are. So it's a very essential part of your day, of, of an essential practice of, of what you do. If you want to be in, in the spiritual remembrance of yourself, like in the true being, the true nature of your being. So here we are. That's why I started this class like this. It is, yeah, okay, here we are. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Like I'm in one of the mansions that were made ready for me. This is where I, from where I operate today. This is how I start my day. By acknowledging that, by feeling that, feeling that there's a presence. So yeah, you release whatever you need to release. It can be by breath, by crying, by um, um, laughing. You know, you can do this in all, all kinds of ways. It really doesn't matter. The one thing is that you literally come into a, a daily practice, basically, of dying daily to your humanhood. You leave everything for a moment. You leave it all behind for a moment. You let go of it, in other words. So here you are, we start our day today by becoming quiet, by coming into a communication that is just given us. See, the great thing is to feel that you don't need to do anything, that you don't need to go anywhere, that you don't need to achieve anything. By being present in this moment, like there's the fulfillment that you're actually looking for. So you can run around for a day in your daily goals and your daily achievements. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But the real accomplishment that you're actually looking for is always within you, in your practice, in your awareness of being here right now. Yeah. So we're starting to slow down. We're sl starting to come into the core of our being by just letting this occur, by just being aware of, yeah, this is our practice, this is what we do, this is our prayer, this is literally a, a demonstration of prayer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So and if you move, have to move around a little bit, that's fine, your body might want to move a little bit, like that's always for me the case. It's like, oh yeah, it's just like a uh, like a rhythm that's flowing through me. It just happens spontaneously. Okay, so let me see what Jill says. Oh yeah, the second question was how to deal with persons or conditions. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, but in relationship, this question is in relationship to spiritual healing. Joel says this, when help is needed for yourself or for others, immediately remember that this call has nothing to do with a person or with a condition. This is the Adam dream or fall of man. This is the mesmerism of the world and nothing else. Stop with that. Turn from the picture. Hold fast to that realization. And do not allow your thought to go back to the person or the condition. Wow. See, this is what Joel brings in so very clear, and I love that about uh, about what he teaches, about what he um, re yeah gives to us in this moment, and that is, 
So you, you, we are so uh, conditioned to think in terms of uh, occasions, of persons, events, uh, and all of that, uh, situations. Or, um, and then Joel comes through and he says just this. It's like, no, we always deal here with mesmerism, with appearances. These are just appearances. So there's no, commun yeah, there's no continuity in it whatsoever it doesn't it doesn't have a beginning and an end it is it is just an uh, appearance it is just a reflection and that makes it um not easy to grasp maybe but it it is part of our practice because basically what we're doing is bringing ourselves back out of a continuity of time that we were used to and coming to a present moment that has given us here now and that is it you know it's like it doesn't go anywhere it is not um yeah not going in a certain direction so the continuation is in the here now and that that makes it actually really easy to intellectually understand uh, how this works it's like yeah you believe in a timeline and actually this timeline doesn't exist it is an appearance it is um, it's like almost like where you hang your laundry, <laughs> like a line where you hang your laundry. Oh yeah, that was yesterday. That's tomorrow, and here I am today. I'm like no, this has nothing to do with time whatsoever. So, coming from the practice of dying daily, coming from the practice of letting go of what you think you are, what you think is going on, you enter into the present moment, a moment that is given to you here and now as a gift, like as a continuous gift of fulfillment, of recognition, of uh, remembrance, and of basically connectedness. So here we are. Um, looking at a certain situation, thinking it has to do with an occurrence or with a person, or um, like there's a drama going on, or there's a whatever going, emergency going on. It's like, no, you just basically leave that for what it is and come into your recognition and your remembrance of this moment. Like, okay, that is an appearance. It is not an actual occurrence at all. And um, you want to have that confirmed when you are uh, acting that way. Like when you are uh, aware that you have a choice to either make that moment real in which there's an occurrence or to let go of that idea and come into the remembrance of your reality. You want that to be confirmed by the universe. So that's why you you can't fool yourself. You, like if you made it real, you already made it real. It doesn't doesn't mean that it have to have to stay that way, but it does mean that you have to uh, come to yourself and come into the remembrance of of who you are and feel the communication, the direct communication with what is. And that can come to you in different ways, um, like suddenly you feel your hands are warming up or suddenly you feel like, oh God, I can't believe it. There's so much light in my, in my head or however that is for you. Like you will have a confirmation that it actually is working. You feel connected. That would be a, a really good one too. It's like you feel the connectedness. So that is, that confirms to you, like you can trust what is going on. You don't have to do this on blind faith or anything. No, you. It's it's okay to allow yourself to ask for the confirmation, and feel that with your own self. So yeah, this is all happening in a very individual your your individual way. It is like spiritual healing as as it is happening in your life is a very individual subjective experience. You know, it has to do with what you are experiencing. It doesn't mean that you determine what is real or not real. No, it is you basically receiving the information that is given in the moment and not to, to give that to others. No, 
just for you to realize, oh my God, I really thought it wasn't, there was a real happening. And now I see it collapse into one another, like my world is collapsing. And I actually come to know who I am by, by just becoming quiet and going within. And this is the practice that we do, like on a daily basis. It's like, yeah, let the world collapse, let it fall apart. Okay, I was I was busy with it for a couple of hours. And now I take time to to come back. Now I take time to to let the world collapse again. Oh yeah, it is of my own making and it doesn't exist. Oh I just made it up. Literally I made it up. Even though I can't believe it right away, I will I will ask for the confirmation that it is so like nothing is fixed in this world this world that you are perceiving appears to be controlling and it appears to be confirming to you uh, the limits that you find yourself in but nothing is fixed in it like it is literally not fixed it is not um, it is not material it is a belief system you literally value and that's why you see it you value it and that's why you see it huh. okay so hmm. oh yeah so the third question that came up was how do you heal and this is basically already what we shared Joel says here, you would sit down in prayer and you would achieve your inner communion with God. That's the basic instruction for spiritual healing. You would sit down and um, go within and have your inner communion in your awareness by letting go of, of what you think is going on in this world and with this person, with, uh, with whoever you meet. No, you come into prayer. You know, at the end of this um, of this class, we will have some time for meditation. So then, this also be comes into practice. You know, that is the great thing with uh, with the material that Joel uh, has been given, and and that is like there's so many prayers in his uh, talks, and that is uh, very helpful for you to to stay in this, um, basically in the practice of remembering, of uh, being available for this spiritual practice, of being available for spiritual healing. So we use that in a moment. Um, so actually we have been talking quite a bit like we've been sharing quite a bit about uh, how to how do you heal so that's why i want to continue like what is the practice of spiritual healing um when it comes to instruction never forget that it is your function to reveal to your patients or students the necessity of dying daily to their human qualities and of being born into spiritual consciousness. Remember, it is not your own demonstrated state of spiritual consciousness which can help another. Remember, it is only your own demonstrated state of spiritual consciousness which can help another, and not just the words you learn from a book. So this is so great too. Remember, it is only your own demonstrated state of spiritual consciousness which can help another, and not just the words you learned from a book. So we we practiced that yesterday too in the class, like how to teach of a teach now class. We were all able to um, extend ourselves for a moment, like. It is not enough to use words from a book. It is not enough. No, it, this is about your own experience of uh, communication that is occurring in this moment. So you can demonstrate that by letting that just happen and by sh um, showing that. So that's why uh, this all comes together in a very nice way. And that is like, 
even the idea of a practitioner training, like we will have an introduction to that uh, in the in the next class, it is it is also just about that. Like it is not to become a practitioner or anything. No, it is about um, coming into the remembrance, coming into your healing consciousness by just doing the practice that is actually being given, by by having a realization of what really is. See, it's very difficult for me to just answer these questions, so that's that's interesting. Um, it is it is the answer will be given anyway so it's not that i am answering these questions and that i uh, will tell you how this all is so the great thing that i'm inviting you in is basically to to get in touch with it by uh, praying by sitting still by having this as your practice and um, see how it extends and expands uh, while you are using this whether you do that in writing, so whether you do that in uh, meeting one another, or whether that is uh, just by sitting still, it really does not matter in what way you are doing that. But it is it is part of your practice, and it is um, coming to you in your own way. So you have perfect guidance with that, like you have a perfect teacher that teaches you that. And that is your inner voice. So to, to, to connect with that and to be, take time to become so quiet that, that you hear it uh, say clearly or that you recognize it during your day activities is, uh, is an incredible uh, gift to yourself. And it helps, you know, it's like then that is like a seed that has been planted that is starting to blossom. So that is so lovely, with, also with the practitioner training, but also with, with what we are reading and in this class is happening and, um, and what you will recognize as your own practice too. Okay, so I promise that we will do another uh, meditation. Um, so I'm, I'm using the part of the book, uh, part of this chapter, you know, this chapter was given by Acropolis Books uh, as a free read, so to speak, as, an, as a gift to the readers. So I thank them very much for, for doing this, um, to give these chapters away, because you see that um, every chapter that we have used in this series so far um, has been like the complete uh, story basically the complete package of what Joel is actually transferring so it really doesn't matter if you read one chapter or you read uh, 10 of his books it will all come down to the same um, basic um, teaching and that is a lovely or basic idea and that is the whole idea of yes I and my father are, are one my my com my um, perfection is taken care of I don't need to make myself more perfect. It is all taken care of. And by me stepping back out of what I think that I need to do uh, and becoming still, that is going to be revealed to me in this present moment here and now. So that is, that's basically what we take with us all the time. And that is being revealed in every book that Joel is giving to us or in every talk that he's uh, speaking. Okay, so here we start a little meditation. And uh, this is also the prayer where I started this class with, but it will continue a little bit more. And uh, we will take just about maybe 10, 15 minutes for it to uh, dive deeply into, the, into your mansion, into the place. In, yeah. So here we go. All that the Father has is mine. Right now, the place where on I stand is holy ground. Nothing need be added to me. 
I am this instant in one of those many mansions of the fathers, even if appearances do not testify to it. I and my father are one. In my true being, in my true identity, I and my father are one. God's nature is available to all who seek. God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven, and there is no other will. God's will is the only will. God's will is the only will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Here and now, God's presence fulfills me. God's presence is the fulfillment of my whole life. To experience the realization of the presence of God is to have my whole life fulfilled. God's grace is my sufficiency in all things, omnipresent where I am. It is not absent from me. It does not have to be attained. God's grace need only be realized. And then it is my sufficiency in all things. God's grace is my sufficiency in all things.
God's grace is my sufficiency in all things. Okay, thank you so much for joining me in this. Thank you so much for taking time to meditate together. And um, thank you for that. <laughs>